The question is, what was the legal effect of this pact? The nations who signed the pact or adhered to it unconditionally condemn recourse to war for the future as an instrument of policy and expressly renounced it. After the signing of the pact, any nation resorting to war as an instrument of national policy breaks the pact. In the opinion of the tribunal, the solemn renunciation of war as an instrument of national policy necessarily involves the proposition that such a war is illegal in international law and that those who plan and wage such a war with its inevitable and terrible consequences are committing a crime in so doing. War for the solution of international controversies undertaken as an instrument of national policy certainly includes a war of aggression and such a war is therefore outlawed by the pact. As Mr. Henry L. Simpson, then Secretary of State of the United States, said in 1932, war between nations was renounced by the signatories of the kellogg briand Treaty. This means that it has become throughout practically the entire world an illegal thing. Hereafter, when nations engage in armed conflict, either one or both of them must be turned violators of this general treaty of law, treaty law. We denounce them as lawbreakers. But it is argued that the pact does not expressly enact that such wars are crimes or set up courts to try those who make such wars. To that extent, the same is true with regard to the laws of war contained in the Hague Convention. The Hague Convention of 1907 prohibited resort to certain methods of waging war. These included the inhumane treatment of prisoners, the employment of poison weapons, the improper use of flags of truce, and similar matters. Many of these prohibitions had been enforced long before the date of the convention, but since 1907, they have certainly been crimes, punishable as offenses against the laws of war. It is also important to remember that Article 227 of the Treaty of Versailles provided for the constitution of a special tribunal composed of representatives of five of the Allied and Associated Powers, which had been belligerents in the First World War, opposed to Germany, to try the former German emperor for a supreme offense against international morality and the sanctity of treaties. The purpose of this trial was expressed to be to vindicate the solemn obligations of international undertakings and the validity of international morality. In Article 228 of the treaty, the German government expressly recognized the right of the Allied powers to bring before military tribunals persons accused of having committed acts